Welcome to Thanks for Your Service, Now What? My name is Francisco Oliva, and I will be your host for today's program. I have with me Mr. Derek Felton, who is the Peninsula Vet Center Director of VA Services. And we also have Lindsay Sin, Deputy Secretary, Women Veterans Affairs, California Department of Veterans Affairs. Both Derek and I are very passionate about and believers in the motto, if you serve, you have earned. This program today is designed to provide information to the 33,000 San Mateo County veterans and their family members regarding benefits and services they have earned in the service to their country. We'll have a subject matter expert who will not only provide information but about services and benefits, but will guide you to the right people who can assist with your needs. A little background on myself. I'm a U.S. Air Force Vietnam era veteran serving from 1967 to 1970. I've been chairman of the San Mateo County Veterans Commission that was established in 2015. Supervisor Warren Slocum uh, championed that effort, and it was based on a need study that was done in 2014. Uh, he also uh, moved forward with the Board of Supervisors of getting that commission put together. So we want to thank the county for actually funding this effort today, and also thank for their, their continued uh, focus on addressing veterans' homelessness. So Derek, can you let the audience know a little bit about your background? Yes, thank you for allowing me to sure. be here. So um, again, my name is Derek Felton, and I'm an Army veteran, and I served from 1988 to 1992. I won't hold that against you, by the way. Don't, don't. <laughs> um, in Fort Richardson, Alaska. Great. Um, after my uh, active duty tour, I served with the Air National Guard, which is coolest Air National Guard, and then I crossed over to the Army National Guard. Yeah. I left Alaska in uh, 1998 and went to Philadelphia. And after I received my master's degree, uh, that was my first introduction to the Department of Veterans Affairs. And so I worked a year and a half in their pension maintenance center, and that's a non-service connected disability. After that, I transferred over to San Francisco, where I was working for the San Francisco Vet Center. And then a year later, I moved to the Peninsula Vet Center, which is located in Menlo Park. And what the vet centers do, we provide readjustment counseling for men and women who've been deployed in a combat theater. In addition to that, we provide services for men and women who've experienced military sexual trauma. Okay, great. Well, Derek, thanks for that extensive background. I mean, you really know a lot about this particular issue. Um, I've asked Derek to address a number of issues that float to the top for, for me today, uh, such as the definition of what is a veteran. I know there's uh, misunderstandings and medications mm -hmm. about the definition of a veteran. Can you provide some clarity for us on that? Well, a lot of us, are veterans, but a lot of us don't know what the actual title of a veteran means. And so the Department of Veterans Affairs has defined that a person who has served honorably or received a general under honorable conditions, and this is under a form called a DD-214, and we know this is our discharge papers. Mm -hmm. And so that's the title of being a veteran. Then there's also the definition of a service-connected veteran. Sure. And this is a veteran who's received injuries while on active duty sure. as being compensated by the VA. Sure. Uh, Briefly run by your thoughts about suicide and, and uh, a little bit of, about what we're hearing about suicide today. Well, it's no different than what you hear all the time about how our veterans are taking their lives. Mm -hmm. And it's a very painful subject for us. Um, those of us who work in the field, we have lost um, clients. We've sure. also lost colleagues. Um, the challenge with suicide is that we don't have a direct answer for it. Okay. There's, there's many factors that lead that person to what they consider as an option. It could be from uh, medication. It could be uh, psychological problems that haven't been addressed yet. Um, just challenges of life itself. And great, so great. one of the things that the, the VA has done, the VA has a national hotline, a suicide hotline. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, the vet centers, we have a vet center combat call center. Mm -hmm. And that number is one eight seven seven war vets And so in addition to that, our vet center, we're open six days a week. and we will always get a live person when you call. Great. Well, thank you for that. That's really, that was really helpful. Thank you. Uh, and, and maybe just touch briefly on what you're, you're, what you're seeing around the issue of veterans' homelessness. Another topic, another great topic. So let's look at how we would define the word homelessness. And so you have short-term homelessness and then you have chronic homelessness. The chronic homelessness are the veterans that um, won't come in to the VA to receive services. These are the men and women you see usually underneath the overpass. Mm -hmm. You might see one or two of them on the street having a sign saying that they're a homeless veteran. Sure. The short-term homelessness, that could be you and I. Yeah. Things in our lives get challenging and then you're not able to pay rent. 
The good thing is, is that the VA has stepped up and we have housing for veterans, we have shelters for veterans. Um, it's just trying to connect the two dots together. Derek, that was great information. We're going to take a short break and we'll be right back. And we're going to have Lindsay Sin, Deputy Secretary, Women's Veterans Affairs, California Department of Veterans Affairs. We're here with Lindsay Sin, and she's the Deputy Secretary of Women's Veterans Affairs, California Department of Veterans Affairs. Boy, that's a mouthful. <laughs> it is. Lindsay, welcome, and thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Um, could you tell us a little bit about yourself and, you know, how you got involved with the veterans uh, organizations and just what your role is? Sure. Um, well, I am a veteran of the United States Navy. I joined the Navy in 1997 right out of high school, and I spent eight years on active duty. Um, I had the great fortune to be a linguist in the Navy. Um, in Navy speak, that's a cryptologic technician interpreter, mm -hmm. a CTI. Mm -hmm. So for any of our um, sailors, they might, they might know that, um, yeah. that rating well. Um, I was stationed in Rota, Spain for most of my Navy career, which was a fantastic experience, and got to travel around the world, did a great job, deployed in operations, um, in support of operations, Northern Watch, um, as well as um, Iraqi um, uh, Freedom and Enduring Freedom, which was just a, a fantastic experience that I could um, give back to my country, particularly after 9-11. Mm -hmm. So then I left the Navy in 2005. I was ready to come back home, and I really wanted to go to college. That was mostly my focus when I got out. And I did just that. I came back to Sacramento, which is my hometown, and began um, pursuing my bachelor's of arts and history. Mm -hmm. I started at the C California Community Colleges and then um, transferred to Sacramento State. And once I finished college, I was looking for a job. Unfortunately, I was looking for a job in the middle of a major economic recession. Yeah. But I was very fortunate to return to American River College and begin working as a certifying official on the campus, which is uh, the person that um, helped certify veterans benefits for education. And it was a fantastic experience that really kind of led me over to Sacramento State to work and then finally uh, landed me um, with an appointment with Governor Brown's administration doing this job well, with the great. California that's, Department that's of Veterans. It's quite a Center. journey. Yeah. I mean, it just it, it reflects very much on how uh, the veteran system a actually contributed to your education and finally get into your role. That, that's Definitely. awesome. Um, Lizzie, I know a number of female veterans are uh, coming home today, mm -hmm. and I know that there are um, a number of challenges that are unique to women, and as they try to integrate back into the mainstream, those challenges are, we're, we're faced with those challenges. Um, and I know there are a number of benefits and services that they are available to them to offset some of these challenges. Can you touch on some of those things and just you know expand on a number of those areas there that uh, cover under that little monologue there? Sure, absolutely. Um, it was mentioned earlier there are 33,000 veterans here in San Mateo County. About 2,000 of those are women veterans. And so we don't typically think of women um, as the stereotypical picture of a veteran, of someone who served in the military. Mm -hmm. We also don't necessarily think that women um, are veterans because they don't carry a, um, they might not carry their camouflage backpack, they don't wear a, a ball cap that says um, a veteran of a specific um, conflict that's typically garb that you see men wearing. So I think that presents an added challenge for women just identifying with the term veteran in the first place, mm -hmm. as well as um, presents a challenge for those trying to connect women with benefits. We first have to find out where women are and, and uh, make sure that we connect them with their benefits and, um, that they may be entitled to, just as men are. So some of the challenges are really similar to what men experience. Of course, the transition from the military to a civilian life is not an easy one. It's a major yes. life's transition. We all know that. Sure. Um, and there's sometimes uh, miscommunication and misunderstanding about what benefits a veteran may qualify for. I think that can be amplified with women, just because we have a different uh, um, experience in serving in the military, a different civilian experience, and because we make a much smaller we make up a much smaller percentage of those who serve. So we are not the typical veteran or the stereotypical veteran. But um, I think 
throughout the um, systems of government, starting at the county, to the state, and to the federal government, there are a great deal of benefits that women may not know about that they should take advantage of. Um, the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs and their health care system has done uh, remarkable improvements in women's health care in the last 10 years. I've personally used it. Um, and I think they continue to improve the service that they offer to women in terms of their health care every day. Women also, um, like me, can use their GI Bill benefits when they get out of the service. That is an absolutely wonderful benefit to use. Um, those are both federal benefits, but on the state side, we also at the California Department of Veterans Affairs have a great deal of benefits to offer men and women. That includes uh, a home loan program. I'm also a recipient of our home loan program, so a California veteran can get a home loan with our department. We are actually the bank, the title holder, the loan approver, all of it. It's just a wonderful benefit. Um, we also have eight long-term care facilities throughout the state that we run for aged and disabled veterans. Mm -hmm. We have women that live at those facilities as well who served in the military. Um, so at each level there are these great benefits for veterans. All of them are applicable to women, but women just may not know about them. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, maybe you can be a little bit more specific about some of the the services or benefits that we uh, don't typically call out because we're guys, right? And and maybe sure. you could share that a little bit more because uh, I, I think we we touched on the high level agencies in places where that mm -hmm. where those those benefits. Can you talk a little bit about some of those things and, and sure. a little more specificity? Sure. Well, California is a great state to be in because. We have a large population of women veterans. We have about 163,000 women veterans here in California, which is about 9% of the total veterans population of the state. Um, and because we have a large population of women veterans, there are activities, events, um, community gatherings going on for women all throughout the state throughout the year. And actually, we're coming up on March, which is Women's Military, uh, which is um, Women's History Month. Great. The third week of March, uh, each year the governor proclaims the third week of March as Women's Military History Week. Mm -hmm. So during that week and then just during the month of March and April, we have a lot of events going on throughout the state in celebration of women who served. One thing we find with women, um, and I know this is true in my case as well, because we're not necessarily recognized as veterans, because we don't always internalize that um, definition. Uh, we don't see as much recognition for women. You know, the automatic mm -hmm. um, default is to think of he who has served in the military or he who has, um, you know, thank him for his service. And we find that women really want to be recognized for their service. Sure. And so we make it a point to share information about what events are going on for women all throughout California. Mm -hmm. That week is, is one way to recognize women who have served. Um, also, at, if you're talking about benefits specific to women, my office reaches out to women um, really through an outreach capacity um, in any way we can. We communicate, we connect, um, and uh, communicate with women and connect them to their benefits um, so they understand that if you served, you earn, um, that women are veterans too, all those great slogans that different groups sure. have. We work a lot with other groups that are um, community-based groups that serve women veterans. So women that are experiencing challenges in transition or challenges in their civilian life, which unfortunately could be homelessness, could be um, needing more financial assistance, could be um, difficulty in connecting with benefits. Our office acts as a resource and a referral service for those individuals. Um, and we advocate on behalf of women throughout the state at all levels of government and then in different communities to ensure that we are collectively raising awareness about women who serve. Great. Maybe you could share with us a little testimony, a little story of how you personally experienced a, a woman a veteran getting a great care or mm -hmm. a great benefit from mm -hmm. the VA. Absolutely. Um, I know a couple of women who, um, including uh, women that I work with closely um, who have been able to go to the VA and get excellent care. Um, I have myself received great care from VA healthcare. Mm -hmm. um, one example is uh, you can get prenatal vitamins from the VA healthcare clinic, right. from the sure. women's clinic. Um, over, uh, I obviously go to the VA in Mather, uh, which is in Sacramento. Mm -hmm. um, but there are uh, women's clinics all throughout the VA healthcare system. And then uh, within those clinics, um, women can be seen for many different uh, medical services. Um, the fact that you can get free prenatal vitamins, uh, you know, if you're trying to start a family, that's actually a great benefit because you don't see that in your civilian great. doctor's Thanks. office. That's so, great information. Yeah. So if you could say 
one thing to that veteran who's sitting there, who's not in the system, that would mm -hmm. get them to come down and mm -hmm. sign up? What would you tell them? I would tell them they um, should definitely look at benefits that they may be eligible for. So they can do that a couple of ways. They can contact their local San Mateo County CVSO. Mm -hmm. uh, they can contact our 800 number. That number is 800-952-5626 and be connected with resources. Perfect. They can visit our website. That's calvet.ca.gov. Um, we have a women-specific page off of that. It's just forward slash women vets, and we have uh, lots of resources and information Great. on those pages. Women can also sign up for our women veterans roster and pick up one of our brochures, which explains a little bit about their benefits uh, here as well. Excellent. Lindsay, that was great information. Thank you so much. We're going to take a short break, and we'll be right back. Lindsay. Lindsay, why don't you continue where and pick up where you left off with that great information. Sure. Um, well, what we really do out of my office is encourage women to sign up for our California Women Veterans roster. Our roster is the opportunity for us to really hear from women who have served in the military here in California. It gives us a chance to connect with them regularly. Uh, right now we have over 7,000 women signed up for our roster, so we feel like we're on our way and we're growing with this piece of um, kind of an online community that we can regularly connect with, but we want to make sure that we uh, continue to grow that. We have 163,000 women here in California. We have a long way to go. So we encourage women to sign up for that. They'll get regular updates and information about what's going on throughout California, um, any information that they want uh, about the federal stuff that we track or the state stuff that we track. If we find out about events and things going on, then we definitely like to share that as much as possible. So women can sign up from our website, calvet.ca.gov forward slash women vets. Mm -hmm. um, they can also call in if they don't have uh, access to a computer. They can call our 800 line. They can also call our direct line and then we can sign them up. And that direct line number is 916-653-1402. Great. You've been at this a while. I'm just gonna off the cuff question here. In your experience, have you seen things improve with the VA over the period of time you've been with the organization? Can you speak of that a little bit? Absolutely. I would say yes. Um, I think that uh, any large organization has challenges kind of um, making major transitions and, and sort of um, serving a new client population. Mm -hmm. And I would say um, women have always served in the military. We have been using VA services for quite some time, but it hasn't been until these recent conflicts over the last 15 years that, that I think VA has seen a real, a real increase in the number of women who have needed those services in healthcare. So in healthcare specifically, I think the VA is making great improvements, but we still have a long way to go. Mm -hmm. And so I encourage women to use VA healthcare because they can be part of the solution in making sure that there are improvements in the delivery of healthcare services for them. Um, there's always challenges with cultural, you know, are, are you here to, you know, are you a patient or are you um, sure. the daughter of a veteran sure. or the wife of a veteran in, in kind of accessing some of these services, unfortunately, but that was 10 years ago. Sure. So I think things are improving and uh, I want women to continue to be active advocates in making sure that VA meets our healthcare needs sure. for sure. I can see that those barriers that you're talking yeah. about. Uh, any, any, uh, specific barriers that you the, that still exist that, that make women reticent about coming into the VA to get treatment. Any Anything in your experience you could share with us that someone may resonate well with in the audience? Sure. Uh, many women don't know they might be eligible for VA health care. That's first and foremost. Yeah. I did not know I was eligible and my grandfather, a World War II Navy vet, dragged me down to the VA hospital yeah. and said, you need to sign up. Um, also, uh, we are really busy. Women are busy people. Um, of I, I see us fulfilling so many roles in our lives that we typically don't address our own health care needs because mm -hmm. we're putting others' needs above ours, our children, our spouses, mm -hmm. loved ones like parents that we're caring for. So sometimes women need to just take the time to actually remember that their health care needs are just as important and um, they have to address that. So the VA is a great place to do that. 
But on the systematic side or the systemic side in terms of VA access itself, we do need to see more female service providers, more female practitioners, more female OBGYNs. Mm -hmm. We need to see more women's clinics throughout the VA that um, allow women to go into those clinics and sit and wait for their appointments um, to provide that full service. Um, and that has increased greatly in, in these last few years, Great. and so I hope to see more of that. Um, and then we also uh, we also need to expand services, perhaps within childcare. Um, it's not something that is is necessarily I, I think approved or ready to go. But I would love in the future to see on-site services for our men and women who have children and can't make a VA appointment because they are not able to bring their children. That would be great. Professor, can I piggyback off Please, that a little sure. bit? Please, sure. Jump in here. Um, you know, the Vet Center, Lindsay, we uh, serve men and women who have experienced military sexual trauma. Mm -hmm. And so what is CDVA doing in support of that as well under MST? Absolutely. Uh, a couple years ago, my office took up an initiative to do what we could to support um, actions to um, where to look at where it might best be appropriate for us to kind of engage in that conversation. Mm -hmm. And really it comes down to raising awareness that um, victims of military sexual trauma and survivors of military sexual trauma um, need to access services through uh, the VA and through vet centers. Mm -hmm. They need to know that um, they can do that regardless of VA healthcare eligibility, right. as well as regardless of having a service-connected disability. Um, so we've tried to communicate that message as much as possible. Um, we've also um, raised awareness within our California legislature about the issue of military sexual trauma. Um, we have uh, actually uh, worked closely with some rape crisis centers and training those personnel about uh, military cultural competency and what it is to be a veteran and that you may have people coming into your, uh, your crisis center seeking these services. Um, and of course we're advocates for seeing um, you know, major changes within the military, awesome. ensuring that uh, men and women who are right. affected by Great. this. Lindsay, we'd like to thank you for your service and thank you for spending time with us. Thank you. We'll see you again soon. Well, folks, I'd like to uh, say to all our fellow veterans and family members, thanks for your service. And keep in mind that if you served, you earned. If you're a veteran or non-vet who knows a vet that should be taking advantage of the benefits, please encourage them to reach out to their local county veteran service agencies and get in the system. Thank you so much for joining us and we hope to see you in the future. <laughs>